I think most people that watch WWE in some form or fashion are pretty usually aligned that commentary is typically a challenge nowadays. It's not great. It's a little in. Eh. It's bad. Really bad. Sucks, awful, worst of all times. That type of thing. Like we're generally in agreement here, right? These aren't the days of King and JR. These aren't the days of Gorilla and Ven Jesse the Body or Gorilla and Heenan or shit, even Vince and Jesse or Vince and Piper and Savage. Like, you think about some of these different commentary teams over the years and you watch a Raw or you watch a SmackDown and it is striking. When we talk about going back in time and watching shows from a more popular era of WWE, a more popular period of WWE and wrestling as a whole, and I would certainly argue better era because more exposure, more money made. Like as much as you talk about the characters, the stories, mic work, then like all those things are noticeable and matter. But it's really striking when you go and watch an old show, let's say from 20, 25 years ago, and you watch a modern show and you just can feel the lack of emotion, the lack of storytelling, the lack of investment by those commentators to sell this like it's the biggest thing ever, or this is a big deal, or hitting the right points and the right things at the right time. Like, it's just striking and lacking. So it shouldn't be surprised that we consistently see to see seem to see different commentary team shakeups by WWE, whether that be via SmackDown or via Raw or what have you. So I wasn't surprised when they shook stuff up again and they moved Tom Phillips out of the commentary role on Monday Night Raw, got rid of Samoa Joe and shit. They just got rid of him, shit canned him entirely. And they bring in Adnan Verk, who I believe was uh, doing some other work before and previously worked with MLB Network, ESPN. And they bring him in to be the lead commentator the play-by-play -play guy for Monday Night Raw. And he debuted, I believe it was last week. So he's had two episodes. And the reaction has certainly been not great. Um, you see all types of tweets and comments talking about how this is and how bad this guy is and just how really, really out of place he feels like. Um, you'll see some positives too, and you see some people saying, hey, give him a chance and give him the benefit of the doubt, because could you imagine being in Adnan Verk's shoes and coming into a situation where you're not just being put on TV, you're putting being put on TV not as a backstage interviewer or as a studio host. You're being put in that place as a we're commentating live Monday Night Raw every week for three damn hours type of space. That's got to be tough. And I'm trying to reserve judgment here because it is incredibly early. It really, really is. But I do want to call this out. For all of you that are criticizing him and shitting all over him, think about if you started a high profile job like him and you had the ability to get all this instant feedback and all this instant criticism, like imagine how poorly you would do in that spot. Some of you probably do even worse than Mr. Verk is doing. I don't think many of you would do better. A lot of you might very well do the same, and that could be true. Um, but I would agree that a couple of weeks, like I watched a little bit of Raw on Monday night, just a little bit of it, and it did get to the point where I turned the volume down all the way because I didn't want to hear the commentary. I mean, you get to the point where you're referencing storylines and this kind of minimalist approach, like, it's really, really off-putting. It really, really isn't doing a good job of telling the story, um, helping advance the characters and the narrative of what's going on. It's not helping anybody. But for all of you that are so critical of Andon Verk, I want, I want you to keep this in mind. The dude's been doing it for two weeks. Like, it is fair if you think he's not good. It is fair to say that he's got a lot of work to do and he's got a long way to go. But 
perhaps we could give him just a little bit of time before we say he should be sucks and he should be replaced and he should have never gotten the gig. You may be proven to be right, but if anything to me, this speaks more to stupidity by Vince McMahon, especially when you see the reports talking about around uh, Virk's debut last week as a commentator on Monday Night Raw. How the hell was he hired by the company and he hadn't even met with Vince McMahon? And you might say, well, does a CEO, does a founder of a company typically meet with every employee that's hired? No, usually they don't. But in batshit Vince world, you would think they typically would, especially when you're talking about somebody that is so prominent in terms of the weekly presentation of Monday Night Raw. Like the wrestlers, excuse me, the superstars, the sports entertainers that perform in the WWE universe, they come and go and they change. You got the guys and the gals, they rotate in and out. But one of the constants every week is the fucking commentators. And this is the play-by-play -play guy. So this is going to be the guy that's doing the majority of the talking, at least a plurality of the talking, every week. And for a guy like Vince McMahon, who shits, eats, breathes, sleeps, the obsession around control and micromanaging, the fact that you hear reports of him not even meeting with him before he gave him the raw commentary job, seems really, really odd. But what seems even more odd about all of this is with all the criticism that Adnan Verk's getting, imagine being in your job right now. And then all of a sudden you get thrown into a position that is four or five levels higher than you in the company or corporation structure. What's going to happen? 99.99% .99 of the time, you are going to be an absolutely fucking failure. You don't understand the way the game is played at that much higher level. Your perspective is different. You may not have the requisite skills developed in order to be in that spot. And when I look at this, and I'm saying this is a guy that, yes, he's done commentary work for other sports, but other sports are not fucking wrestling. It is different. It is sizably different. To me, it is an injustice to Adnan Verk and a gross measure of imbecility that he was even put into this damn spot to begin with. Why wouldn't you start him out with a studio show? Why not put him on the Raw Post Show or Talking Smack or something? Why not have him try his chops as a backstage interviewer at Raw? For God's sakes, why wouldn't you sit there and maybe have him work on NXT or Main Event or something else like that? Instead, you throw him into the fucking walls like he's freaking Mike Adamley. I can't wait for the first time Adnan sits there and talks about Jeff Harvey. I can't lie. I would legit LOL pop for that a little bit. But you've now taken a guy that maybe you feel like has some requisite skills that could potentially translate, which I may question a little bit, yes. But you have absolutely thrown him to the wolves. Like as easy as it is to criticize him for his first two weeks of performance on commentary, which I would agree have not been great. I feel bad for him. You could say, well, he's drawing the paycheck. He didn't turn it down. So how much do you feel bad for him? Agreed. Agreed. But at the same point in time, is it coming upon somebody else to say, no, Vince, you know what? This is really fucking stupid. Don't throw him out there like this. Don't put him in this type of situation. Don't put him in this type of environment. Because it's not going to work. And you can sit there and talk about, well, he's got to learn on the job and practice makes perfect. Yeah, to a certain degree. But if you are so overwhelmed and so out of your scope and so out of your lane, all that practice is only going to be but so good because you still don't know what the fuck to do. Like, and I was listening a little bit before I did turn down the volume last night. Like, I would question this spot if you're not actually going to sit there and bother to know the product. It was clear you didn't know the product. Like, you're asking legitimate questions. It sounds like shoot questions about why this is happening, why this person's doing this or that person's doing that. Why in the fuck would you put a person into a spot, WWE, that is clearly unprepared for? Why would you put him into a spot where he is, as a byproduct, your number one storyteller and he can't effectively tell the stories? If you're Adnan Verk and you knew this was potentially going to happen, why wouldn't you have better versed yourself in the history and the current goings on of WWE to be better prepared when you were put into this situation? I don't get any of it whatsoever. 
So the, all the talk about he sucks and he should be fired, like let's calm down on that a little bit. Let's give him a little bit of time because he's there now. They've already made the change. You can't go back on it in a couple weeks. But when I say I have concerns and sizable concerns about what type of job he's going to do, yeah. Because even if you see like people bumble and fumble through different things, you can occasionally see these flashes of potential and I didn't see it. Like not everybody that's a good talker when it comes to one form of entertainment or one form of sport automatically translates to wrestling. It is truly indeed an entirely different vibe, an entirely different thing. And some people can make that transition and some people can't. At this point in time, I almost wish we had the ghost of Art Donovan coming and commentating on Raw every week. He'd be sitting there asking valid questions such as, how much does that guy weigh anyways? Like, you imagine that? Like, we could use that when it's talking about Monday Night Raw. But for a show that's already struggling to keep its audience engaged, for a stro show that a lot of people are shitting on pretty consistently, it feels like the last thing you want to do is put another unqualified person or an unprepared, more importantly, person in this spot. And that's exactly what they did. Now, hopefully in time he gets better. But I cannot, I cannot for the life of me understand the logic, rationale, justification for putting him in this spot as they did when it just doesn't feel like it was necessary. You've never done it before, so let's put you on a flagship show. Like who does that? That is gross imbecility of the highest order. I guess that's the WWE today. Well, I don't feel sorry for Adnan Verg drawing a decent paycheck from WWE or getting the chance to be on primetime national television for three hours every Monday. I feel bad in the sense that wrestling is an entirely different vibe and environment, especially the wrestling bubble and the internet culture. Like you're being thrown to the wolves here and I don't feel like you're even being given a chance. You have no ammo to fight back with. You have nothing. Like, I wonder if we're going to look back on this a decade from now and feel like it's an Adam Lee situation, if not worse. And let's hope to God it's not for his sake and the sake of Monday Night Raw, because God knows that show could use something right now. We better hope that he figures it out quickly, because if he doesn't, imagine how intolerable that show is going to be then.